Good morning, everybody. Dr. G here, ready for a little bit more old bones. We're up to chapter six. It's Derby Day. Exciting. The run for the roses. If you win the Kentucky Derby, they put a big thing of roses around you. So this chapter is called Run for the Roses. The horses were led out to the saddling paddock. The rain had stopped. The day was still gray, but the sweetness of springtime was all about and trees and lawns were a bright new washed green. In the paddock, the horses were led around and around the walking ring as they waited for the jockeys to be weighed in. People pushed and shoved to get close to the fence that surrounded the paddock, fighting for a glimpse of the horses, hoping to be able to choose the one that would go down in racing history as the Kentucky Derby winner. McDaniel ignored the jibes people were making at Bones. Now, Ain't that some horse? Look at him. Kilmer must be out of his mind to let that sack full of bones carry his colors. Heard Kilmer was running a workhorse. He's a workhorse for sure. The jockeys came into the paddock, small, neat figures in their bright silks. Willie Knapp, clad in the green, orange, and brown silks of the Kilmer stables, came over to Exterminator. McDaniel gave him a leg up. Nobody saw Exterminator tremble with excitement when the jockey's light weight touched his back. Nobody saw his quivering when the bugle sounded. <laughs> Only Exterminator knew the excitement was there, and he stood waiting very quietly. While Knapp went to adjust his stirrups, and a man yelled, Hey Knapp, why don't you get a horse? The crowd hooted and Willie Knapp's face turned a deep red. Poor Willie. He had looked forward to riding Sunbriar to winning the Derby, but now he was stuck with old bones. McDaniel put a gentle hand on the horse's muzzle, and Exterminator nuzzled the hand. McDaniel spoke to him softly. Remember what I told you, fella. You can do it. Then he smiled confidently at the jockey and said, Hurry home, Willie. You're on the best horse even if a lot of people don't think so. The picture. Willie raised his crop in answer and took his place in the parade that wound up a ramp toward the track. It was a bright parade led by a scarlet-coated outrider on a gray pony. The great crowd that watched was the largest that had ever seen a Kentucky Derby. People crowded into every inch of space in the clubhouse and in the grandstands, and for a quarter of a mile, a solid mass of people lined the lawns. All heads turned in the direction of the approaching parade. All eyes strained to see the horses. Here they came, the thoroughbreds, prancing nervously, heads reared high. All except one. Bones sloshed along, his big head thrust forward on his long neck, as unconcerned as if he were hauling a load of hay. That's how he looked to those watching. They couldn't see the joy that filled the big bony body, joy that had been building up since mid-morning when, when he had known that he would race that day. The American flag was run up, fluttering bright against the sunless sky. The ba band began to play. The crowds rose and for a few solemn moments, there was only the sound of the music, and all eyes were on the flag. But the solemn moment ended, and the band music, if anything, had heightened the emotions, sharpened the excitement of the crowd. Again, everyone was watching the horses. Excitedly, people called the name of the horse they hoped to see win as it passed by. It was not difficult to see who the favorites were. Escoba! There he is! Escoba! Ripples of cheers greeted Escoba. Hey, Sewell Combs, way to go. War Cloud, War Cloud, we got gotcha. you. The stands broke into a noisy demonstration as the top favorite came by. Not until the parade was far down the stretch on the way to the post was Exterminator's name called. There, crowded against the fence, Mike Terry watched. You show him, Exterminator. He shouted at the chestnut horse plodded by. A great roar of laughter exploded around him. Who's gonna, who's he gonna exterminate? Himself? <laughs> A man yelled. Mike looked straight ahead, his eyes on his horse. 
ignoring the laughter and the jokes that followed. He didn't care. Exterminator had heard him. Mike was sure he had seen him turn his head when his name was called. Now the horses were at the post. The starters were lining up. Here's the parade. It's so mean that they're so mean to Exterminator. Nervously, the thoroughbreds danced about, reared and sidestepped, all but bones. He stood where he had been put looking unconcerned, paying not the slightest attention to the excited animals around him. Look at Exterminator. I swear he's asleep. Look at that work horse, will you? Stuck in the mud he is. You'll never know when the race starts. Kilmer pulled his hat down over his eyes. The sympathetic glances from his friends were almost worse than the biting comments. It would have been a different day indeed with Sunbriar in there, but that work horse... What had McDaniel got him into? They're off, the words roared from the stands as the horses broke. Kilmer looked to see how long his entry would stand at the post. But he wasn't at the post. Someone next to Kilmer was shouting, Exterminator is fifth! Viva America broke on top. Escoba and American Eagle close behind. Sewell Combs next. Yes, yes, Exterminator is fifth. At least he's in the race. Kilmer rocked his chair so far forward it tipped, pitching him on the floor of the box. He picked himself up fast and trained his glasses on the moving line of horses. Where? Where were those green, orange, and brown silks now? The jockey, Willie Knapp, flattened himself against the powerful horse's neck and tried to see through the showering mud. Mud bombarded horse and rider from all sides. In front, a thundering wall of horses blocked them. Horses pounded close and threatening behind. Willie looked desperately for a break in the solid mass in front of him. He talked to Exterminator as if he were praying. Please, we gotta get through. We gotta get through, Exterminator. We gotta get through. We can do it. Oh, Exterminator knew as well as Willie Knapp did. Old Bones, too, was looking for a little hole in that solid wall. Just a little space to run by. In spite of everything, the powerful, steady strides never broke their rhythm. He had to get through. He moved toward the rail. It was a bold move, for jockeys whose horses were in better positions were battling for the rail too. How exciting that is. Dun, dun, dun. It was a dangerous move. The rail and tons of plunging, fighting horses. But if he could find just a little space, a horse moved and he saw the little space so narrow It widened a bit, a little more. Should he try? It was now or never. Old Bones and his jockey were hurtling through the little space. How could they see in the mud like this? But horse and rider knew when they passed the others. Sewell Combs first, then American Eagle, then Escoba. Viva America was still in front, pelting them with mud. Ah, ah. McDaniel was watching, white and silent, when he saw and whispered, Now Bones... Let him go, Willie. Go, go, go. Willie Knapp made a movement with his arm as if he had heard McDaniel. And Bones, understanding, poured more strength into his powerful strides. Suddenly, amazingly, no mud rained in their faces. Bones and Willie knew they were in the lead. But now another horse bore down on them. Close, too close. A nose, a head, edged by them. It was Escoba. Escoba wanted to win, too. Escoba passed them, Willie crying, No! 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 Bones agreed. More power, more strength. Bones pulled even with Escoba. For a few seconds, they ran neck and neck. Then the steady rhythmic stride sped past, faster and faster. And Bones pulled past Escoba, ahead by a neck. Half a length, a full length. Bones was across the finish line! A few seconds before, the stands had been filled with jumping and screaming people. Now the thousands stood paralyzed, silent. What had just happened? Who was this horse? The stunned silence lasted only for seconds. Then, wave on wave, the cheers came for the unknown workhorse that had run so magnificent a race. 
Old Bones, with Willie still in the sta saddle, stood in the winner's circle. Photographers and newsmen were waiting. Henry McDaniel came, limp tired but happy. Bones saw him and turned his head toward him ever so slightly. For a second, McDaniel thought the horse was going to grab his sleeve playfully, but no. Bone rea Bones realized the significance and import of the occasion. He merely looked at his trainer and gave him a slow wink, as if to say, we fooled them, didn't we? We made it. We got this. McDaniel acknowledged the wink with a quick nod. Mr. Kilmer was there, being politely congratulated by people who were still shocked by the surprise finish. The governor of the state of Kentucky was there, saying proud things about the Kentucky-bred Derby winner. The huge horseshoe of red roses was lifted and hung around Old Bones' neck. He stood with dignity while the roses were put in place, while cameras clicked and people cheered, while reporters interviewed Kilmer, McDaniel, Willie. Someone said, he's the one horse nobody thought would wear those roses. Henry McDaniel smiled. Nobody. There were two exceptions. McDaniel was one. The other was the boy, Mike Terry, who at that moment was down at the stable, waiting and hoping to be hired by Henry McDaniel. Now Exterminator was led triumphantly back to the barn, where he was greeted by grooms, stablemen, and exercise boys. Now there were plenty of men eager to clean off the mud, sponge him, rub him down, cool him out. He whinnied happily. <coughs> Never before had so much affectionate attention been shown to him. Good old Bones, look at him, calm as if he'd taken a run down the pike. Hey, Exterminator. How you like those roses, boy? Jumping Jupiter, never saw anything like it in all my born days. Shouts of joy went up when word came to the barn that Mr. Kilmer was doubling everybody's salary for the month of May. Good old bones, the men cried. Hooray for exterminator, that old fellow. Double dough, thanks to you. They're all getting paid twice as much because he won. Way to go, old bones. Through all the excitement, a boy stood back, watching, waiting. One of the grooms yelled, Hey, boy, who are you? McDaniel came into the barn just in time to hear the question. His voice thundered and everyone listened, for Henry McDaniel was usually a quiet-spoken man. Who is he? I'll tell you who he is. He's our newest hand, hired today. He's Mike Terry. He's the only one of the lot of you who believed Exterminator would win. That's who he is. Everyone was quiet for a second. Then Henry McDaniel broke into a big grin and shouted, Come on over here, Mike, and meet the rest of the boys. Exterminator was back in his stall, munching contentedly on hay. The barn was quiet. All who could get away had gone into Louisville to celebrate. Henry McDaniel went back to have one more look at Bones before leaving. He found him there, stroking the horse's head talking to him softly. You love horses, don't you, boy? At that voice, Mike turned in surprise. Yes, sir, I do, especially this one. I knew the minute I laid eyes on him, he was the horse I'd been looking for all my life. Seems like he's really fond of you too, Henry McDaniel said, watching Bones nuzzle the boy with his soft nose. Mike smiled. I reckon he knows how I feel about him. I think he understands. I think so too, Mike. And I think you'll make a fine team, he smiled. Did the boys fix you up with a room? Yes, sir. And if the food tonight was a sample, I'd say you'd feel real good here at the Kilmer Stables. Tonight might have been a bit special, but I never hear any complaints, Henry McDaniel turned to go. I'm going to count on you to take good care of Exterminator, Mike. Oh, I will, the boy said. I will. His face was shining with happiness. I will never leave him as long as he lives. And Mike Terry never did. Isn't that exciting? I love this story. It's my dad's favorite book, Old Bones, The Wonder Horse. Nobody believed in him. But he said, we got this. And he won the Kentucky Derby. See ya. Live long and prosper.